Welcome back to another Super Animal Royale video, everyone. Today, we are going to be spectating the best competitive players, the players with the highest earnings and the best performances. And we're gonna be trying to pick up some tips and tricks for them, maybe hearing from themselves what kind of strategies they use to win a majority of their games and to make a lot of money in these SAR comp tournaments. We are gonna be starting today's video with the highest paid comp player rookie and we're going to be spectating him as he plays solos and we're going to try to figure out what sort of things we can implement into our own gameplay to win more games let's start over there with him all right gamers we are into game number one on the map with rookie i'm going to wait and see where they drop it i'm going to land on rookie's head and i'm going to let them kill me and we are going to spectate them and hopefully be able to pick up some tips and tricks from them. Now, Rookie, like I said in the introduction, is currently probably the highest rated player in the entire game. In the entire game. I'm talking most competitive tournament wins, very high on Royale.pet leaderboards, as well as the most money earned from tournaments as well. So we're gonna be taking a look at what kind of guns he prioritizes, what kind of utilities he prioritizes, and everything in between that. First of all, it looks like we had a bit of a north to south flight path and Rookie decided to land at the Saw Security. It is known as a location pretty good because of its central to the map as well as it has a lot of loot. But look, he is not gonna be lingering in one spot for too long. He is grabbing some weapons that he likes and instantly hopping out. Now he did get a silence pistol from a box off the rip, which is going to be honestly a fantastic start. All right, coming face to face with a bot cap, honestly just trying to conserve ammo, not take too many hits. And that's not what we're really gonna see. Oh. Listen to the sound cue there of the player healing. Knew that someone was there and had that pistol ready to go. So already a few things that we can pick up from Rookie's gameplay. One, trying to get out of wherever your starting location is quickly. Loot quickly and start moving on so that you guys can get a good circle position. And listen for sound cues. All right, ducking in and out of cover. Very good play by Rookie. That is one of the things that a lot of competitive players do that a lot of casual players do not. You should be firing shots and instantly ducking behind any cover that you can find to potentially save yourself from getting hits. Now he is contesting the crate, creep walking, trying to listen for sound cues. Silence Pistol is going pretty crazy right now. All right, now he does pick up the bow here. And okay, here's the player. Decides to melee them, trying to conserve as many resources as he can. Heard the player creeping up behind the boxes there to the top left. Now, let's see where he's positioning. He's kind of making sure that he's in the circle at all times. And it looks like he will already be in the next circle. Kind of just pacing back and forth. Listen, I think a lot of people sometimes confuse themselves. You guys distract yourselves with doing too much movements. Look how minimal of movements Rookie is doing. Sometimes he's just remaining very calm. Nice. Taking very calm shots. Running into one player after another. Now... I think something that Rookie does from spectating a lot of Rookie games is he um, really kind of beats people psychologically. Here's what I mean. Um, a lot of times when you're running up to a player, you do not know how much HP they have. So sometimes Rookie, even though he has no tape or might even be half HP, kind of just uses the advantage of confidence shooting those shots before he starts healing, kind of like how we just saw where he was missing several tape, but the enemy player did not know that he was missing several tape. So he just decided to take that fight. All right, still using the bow. And as we've seen, he has really decided to use the ninja booties this entire game. One of his favorite utilities and a utility that honestly, I feel like a lot of players like as well. 
silence pistol, listening for sound cues, heard the shotgun and kind of just kind of tried to keep his distance as much as he could in that tight corner. All right, still just staying in circle. He knows about the height advantage. You can see further down than you can see up. So he's trying to stay on the top side of the circle, the top side of the screen. Knows this player's going, tried to pre-fire the corner. Great idea, pre-fire the corners if you know players are gonna try to be pushing you from there. All right, picks up a cat mine just to throw it down for a little bit of zoning. Good strategy there, wants to pick up his grenade though. Rookie loves normal grenades. He uses them all the time. Comes to face to face with a shotgun player. Hey, instantly separates and makes some space. Now, he's not gonna waste time taping up a three armor, but instead he is instantly hopping to a one armor swap and getting back into the fight. Sniper player running at him, just trying to lay down some shots. So now, when he sees that two players are both hurt and backing up, he is then going to grab a three armor and look, a lot of players would full heal there, but no. He just applied one tape and played aggressive and tried to finish his kill. Rookie, one of the best sniper players to ever touch the game. And now we get to see the sniper in his hands. So, currently sitting in the tree. He currently just sat in that tree, tried to um, really use the camouflage to get a surprise attack and it did work. Now he was, oh, he heard a player in the house and started using those skunks to try to get them out of the small room. Pre-shooting the corner and using a melee to finish off the damage. Absolutely insane play by Rookie. Look, he hears that he's skunking someone out and he wins the game, starts emoting before the win even comes on the screen. Absolutely masterclass solo game here by Rookie. And let's pause real quick to review some of the things that we just saw that he did. Pre-firing corners, pre-firing the locations where he knows players are gonna be. He loved the ninja booties, pick up a pair of ninja booties. He loves the extra speed and the ability to be a little bit more sneaky and quiet. Use utilities like cat mines that you find on the floor and skunk grenades to try to gain extra information. When you drop, grab whatever loot that you can find and get out of there quick and start rotating towards the circle. Figure out what sort of guns that you are comfortable with and try to use a minimal move movement when in a gunfight so you can really focus on hitting those shots well it depends on how you play um i am someone who trains in normal games for tournaments so i choose a spawn that's a little far from everything but not too far and i practice uh, knowing the rotations perfectly and uh, i generally land on ninja boots my flagship item it also depends on how you play I play and I always get the upper hand on others. And since this uh, power hub hides your position with noise and boosts your speed, I think it's the most uh, suitable power up for my style of play. The question doesn't really have an answer because it's uh, situational. But in general, in a 1v1 situation, I disengage the fight if the enemy has dealt me enough damage for me to die in one or two hits. I also would uh, disengage the fight in case I got the information that a new person could arrive and kill me. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are at game number two and we just saw an absolutely fantastic first game picking up honestly a ton of different tips and tricks just in that first game alone. But we are back for another solo game. I'm going to try to land on Rookie's head and hopefully he'll take me out. And we're going to be spectating Rookie once again, seeing if anything changes, seeing if his drop pattern, if he uses a different utility, if he wants to use a different weapon. Let's figure it out right now, game number two. So this game, he is instantly getting into a fight. He picked up a gray SMG to start. Now that was, a wow, we just actually immediately saw an interesting play. He actually chose to put a tier one armor on instead of a tier two armor so that he could save it for when he won the fight. That is just what I would call pure confidence out of a competitive player. So already right away, think about using your lower tier armors first if you know that you'll win a fight and two, just straight have straight up confidence in your ability to win a fight. Now Magnum is a little bit harder to use. Guys, you have to remember, Rookie is one of the best players in the game. Um, in your normal solos, squads, tournaments, 
and he is playing from Europe on NA Ping. So listen, if Rookie has no excuses, you shouldn't have any excuses either. Rookie has no excuses. Don't have any excuses. Just keep grounded. I heard that bot ahead of time was able to take him out from around the corner. And let's see what kind of uh, play Rookie wants to make next here. So Rookie staying inside of the circle once again. Guys, he did not loot the entirety of the Bamboo Resort. He did not check every nook and cranny for lootations. He took loot from his initial drop spot, took one fight, and now he's already leaving, rotating to the next objective. Let's keep that in mind as we watch our comp players here. Quick rotations, quick looting patterns, and it looks like he wants to contest this mole crate. Okay, he already heard some sound cues of players. Kind of switching between rolling and stopping his rolls to see if he can get any sound cues on where the players are. All right, saw that player there. Straight revolver shot, so we'll take them out. And Rookie's actually going to pick up the Jag here. And we're gonna see how deadly he can be. So once again, completely prioritizing the ninja booties. And we got to hear kind of last game from Rookie why the ninja booties are so valuable to him. And once again, I think we saw this recurring after the last two games as well. He loves to hold the grenades. A lot of players love using skunk grenades. They love holding zip lines for some reason. But we're gonna see Rookie almost universally holding out these grenades. Now that could have been dangerous. Guys, AI, AI. Let's watch this fight real quick. It's King. That's actually very unlucky what just happened. So let's see how he decides to disengage. See, dropping his grenade, instantly placing a cat mine down, making room. And he's not going to fold this engage. He's going to kind of stay close so that he can hear any of the sound cues that is potentially happening. And listen, he just heard people also looking. He's going to pop his own grenade by just slightly walking over. And look, he's going to get aggressive once again and take a fight. And he's going to take out Handsome Scholar. Now, big loot pile, and he's going to decide to take the Deagle, leaving the M16 on the floor for now, taking the Deagle, and keeping the Jag. Okay, definitely wants to get that player off of the Emu. Let's see if he continues to take the fight. Okay, so I don't think he really wanted to fight that player necessarily. I think he just wanted to get the Emu out of the game. All right, healing, guys, this is a very sneaky part of the map right here. That gray wall, it is very hard to see players behind it unless you are paying an insane amount of attention. Use that wall to your advantage while you're healing up. Wait, reloaded the M16 just in case? I think he ran out of bullets for the Deagle. Interesting tactic there. Okay, holding out a grenade. Who knows that that just big, big, big damage. Heard this player up top, listen. Rookie is listening to these sound cues so well, guys. Plug a pair of headphones in, turn up that volume. Make sure that you are listening, because wow, being able to just hear the slight sound through the wall of that player healing and decides to get aggressive because he doesn't want anyone behind him. All right, pushing into, he knows where the circle is going. Okay, kind of just shooting a few M16 warning shots, not wanting to dump an entire magazine like we see some players do. Now listen, Ninja Booties, he's gonna start creep rolling, looking for information. Guys, the Jag can be such a dangerous weapon with Ninja Booties. Finds the player, two M16 shots land. Finds the player again, one Jag shot, two Jag shot, changes to M16. Someone actually accidentally stole his kill. And he's still, guys, he's not spamming all of his grenades. He's using one grenade at a time. He's gonna take this breather. He sees good zone advantage here. Okay, he's gonna use his last two grenades. Finds a cat mine, instantly places the cat mine. Finds another cat mine and protects the top side as well. Full on tape, M16 shots coming out. Skunk cast, he's just gonna be able to back away from that. So listen, he's gonna be listening for sound cues. We hear the healing on the far left right now. He's grabbing more ammos, listening for players, starting to stack up the bananas on the loot pile, potentially for a sneak. Somehow that Skullcat made it through the banana. Nice, and he actually takes what looked like a 1v2 at the end of the game there. 
played it super solid, let the two players take the initial fight, come through with a jag, and that is an extremely good weapon to have in that final circle, and it helped him win the game. Let's go over a short recap of everything we kind of took away from that game that was a little bit different than the first game. This game, we saw him prioritizing the jag, using the creep. Guys, if you have ninja booty and you are creep rolling with a jag, that can be absolutely dangerous. Once again, listen for sound cues. He used the information that he was getting from sound cues to set himself up for success by taking out the players that he knew could be on his flanking routes. And guys, use your environment. He was high hiding behind walls, hiding behind trees perfectly while doing things like reloading, cupping, and taping, and those things can um, really give you an advantage. The M16 is a weapon more suited to the end of the circle, and since it's chaotic and the circle is much smaller, it's less useful to have a weapon like a sniper with few bullets and less usefulness in tower fights. However, from the beginning until the ultimate circles, uh, the sniper is much more useful in being able to hunt other players. I got the information from the sound that someone was heading themselves in the lab. I also knew that some players were around, so I wanted to kill him in case he came behind my back. And it was also an opportunity to change the weapon, because as I said previously, it was more useful for me to have an automatic weapon than to have a semi-automatic one. All right, we are heading into the last game of recording with Ruki. Ruki has actually requested to try a solo squad win here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get myself killed. Actually, I'll try to get a melee kill. <laughs> okay, that's funny. I'm gonna go ahead and get myself killed and we are gonna spectate Ruki as he tries to win a solo squad game. Now, you have to think that this is going to uh, have some even harder complications here than a normal solo. So we're gonna have to see if his gun choices, if his grenade choices, if his utility choices change at all. So far he landed, hasn't picked up any of the armors on the floor just yet, taking a hunting rifle and a shotgun. Here's player's emu ranch. Okay, so it looks like in squads, he's going to be trying to take out players um, that are not to just kind of get them out of the game, which makes sense. The worst thing that you can do is get overwhelmed. Okay, so he uses all of the hunting rifle ammo and then he's going to instantly drop the hunting rifle and he picks up a bow instead. Okay, finds some dual pistol and decides to drop the shotgun for it. So he's actually gonna continue to use the bow. Now, I've actually never seen Rookie prioritize the bow. So this is a bit of an interesting decision, but we'll see what they do with it. All right, Rookie is now gonna be checking out the pyramid, not healing their armor. And I think that they could potentially be looking for a armor themselves. Now, Rookie actually just found a sniper, which is once again, sniper is Rookie's best gun by far and so we're gonna see what kind of crazy situations that he's gonna get himself into with this sniper so rookie obviously liking this um room over here picks up the silence pistol wow this is my favorite loadout in the entire game right here sniper and silence pistol so we're gonna see how dangerous rookie can become with this loadout so so far he's actually holding the impossible tape this time around instead of ninja booties now i don't know if that's because he hasn't found a ninja booties or what kind of backtracking through emu seeing if there's any fresh players in here but it looks like guys look he isn't waiting until the storm is all the way on top of him he is making sure that he is getting to the zone well ahead of time and i think you guys should be prioritizing your zone location as well Big fight happening at the Bamboo Forest. So, okay, wow. That, see, that is just pure confidence. Rookie almost landing every single shot of the Silence Pistol and Sniper. See, when he did that 96 damage to that player, he decided, oh my gosh, look at the confidence, guys. Look at the movement. To be able to go against a super right laser, land a shot for 96 damage with the Sniper and decide to melee the player. Hey, he's going to take a peek and then instantly try to nade upwards and he actually is going to land it. So far landing every... Okay, he missed that shot actually. 
big damage there is actually going to switch to the arm and look he is going to start creep rolling consistently with this sniper to gain the extra information on the top side weaving in a grenade throw as well knocks that player from afar finds a two armor and he's going to switch now the worst thing that he can do is get overwhelmed so he's kind of backing up momentarily to um reassess his situation now Rookie probably just took down six players then by themselves, and we're going to have to recap in just a minute the things that he was taking advantage of. But one of the ones I know was using the creep rolls with the sniper to get that in extra information off screen, weaving in grenade throws when you're running out of bullets for some extra damage and to kind of make players panic. And also, not panicking with your movement. If someone starts shooting a super right laser at you, do not panic, do not freak out. Oh my gosh, he barely gets that two armor swap off. Trying to snipe the player in zone. Misses two bullets. Now he's actually going to be pursuing this player, which is very interesting. Wow. Predicts the location, predicts the movement, and does take the player out. He's going to start the cup because he knows he can outwalk the circle here. And just like that, Rookie playing absolutely crazy right now. And he's going to be down to a top seven situation. And once again, guys, I don't know if you realize this, right when he found Ninja Booties, he instantly picked off the Ninja Booties. So if you are a competitive player, if you want to try to win more, more of your games, it seems like movement is extremely valuable to Rookie. So I think it should be to you as well. Guy Fury is in this lobby and they are against Rookie in this final circle. Guy Fury is a very solid player. So we're going to have to see what happens here. Oh my gosh, he just got absolutely ping differenced with that handball. And I have a feeling that was just a insane ping difference because he was able to break that handball and deal a tape damage, but still got one shot by the handball. Sometimes that is just an EU ping difference. But you know what? Rookie does not complain barely about those things. I complain more about ping on my own server than he does. He kind of just takes it on the chin, figures out what he needs to do next game, and he do well. And this is why he's one of the best competitive players. Mental, strong, good decision-making, listening guys like 140 ping eu player playing on the na servers get 13 kills in a solo squad rookie nasty player i hope you guys got to learn a little bit more about his game and now we are going to go check in with another comp player who has been doing very well in the last few events but also has a completely different play style than rookie let's go ahead and check out suhei and what they can do in game. All right, I have now found Suhei in a lobby. And like I said in the last clip, Suhei and Ruki actually have a tremendously different play style. While Ruki likes to use the sniper and kind of creep around and play around these corners and pre-fire different angles, Suhei is one of the best bow players on any server that he plays on and he will be going all out speed demon aggressive seeing red and chasing players down so let's see what kind of tactics suhei as a really good competitive player pulls to win some games all right suhei takes us out and let's take a gander at what sort of weapons and equipment he is going to prioritize so he is smartly going to back off a little bit there, takes an armor swap. So he's starting with a shotgun and a single pistol, and he decides he does not want to play the small hallways versus a super right laser, which is very good. All right, he just got information that a player had taken the armor there. Okay, shotguns around the corner, pulls out the dual pistols and takes a kill. So Suhei, is instantly trying to heal up a two armor thinking pretty confidently that he will not be able to find a swap and there you go instantly picking up the first bow that they can find so let me show you what i mean when i say that these players are really prioritizing different weapons and playing with different levels of aggression look as suhei is bobbing and weaving in between different blockades and making sure to shoot one arrow through each one. Wow, that's actually such a tough situation. Wow, Suhei actually somehow living after coming face to face that close with the player. 
Aitsune getting chased by his speed emu, is just going to decide to step away for now. Sees the two armor swap, is going to take it. He's using sound cues to try to pre-fire some of these angles. Now he's going to be using the mobility of the bow to try to take down this emu while staying on the move. Kind of just shooting into the open spaces that they know that the player might be playing. Takes down the emu, continues chase. Now this is what I mean. If Suhei locks eyes on you, Suhei is going to chase you until one of you two die. And just like that, like I said earlier, Suhei is going to be taking out that player. So Suhei is actually using the Forker, which we actually did not see Ruki use a single time. So this is kind of a unique situation from what we saw with Ruki. And look at that. We saw that Ruki loved using grenades, held the grenades every single game. But with Suhei, he is going to be preferring to hold as many bananas as possible. Look, actually spending some time instead of running into zone as fast as possible, gathering resources, specifically bananas, to try to get ready to use that forker to its maximum ability. So holding out the boat, you know, kind of destroying any sort of movement options that they can see around them. Breaking some boxes, looking for any bananas wherever they can find them. Heading towards zone. Now they're sort of in the top side of zone now. Kind of looking for players, searching them out, wanting to make sure that no players are going to be behind them. He's actually going to get a verbal cue from the mummy, but decides not to pursue it. Instead, kind of checking the central area of the Sahara land here. Okay, finally hearing a player and already just trying to make sure that they get some bow shots out into the open water. So they're playing against a player with a sniper, but look, staying cool, staying calm. Forker's up to 100% HP, trying to make sure they are above that sniper range. Bagging up, playing it momentarily safe. Comes face to face with the player again. Gets the bone draw back, and we're going to start seeing the movement technology once again. Good good shot by the Axolotl player. Does also get hit with a, oh my gosh, almost going down there, but expert movement to sort of survive there. Instead of taping up, they're going to just take that one armor and start to move on. So as we can see, Suhei really is valuing the bird tracking system. So they're just trying to kind of put shots where they think the players might be. Sue is going to spend some extra time getting a free extra bit of healing from that fireplace and instantly starts looking at this next player. Dude, there's almost no telling where Suhei is going to move. Four bow shots in a row landing and taking them out. Look at this. So, so confident in the bow shots. So confident in the movement. As we saw with... Rookie, sometimes he was barely moving at all, just completely focusing on minimal movements and landing all the shots. Meanwhile, Suhei is just getting as many bullets as possible into a fight and prioritizing insane up and down and left and right movement to be able to survive. Wow, Suhei somehow running into every player that seems to be left in the lobby, trying to find a quiet space to heal. So they're only going to use one tape and then they're going to start prioritizing the health heals instead. Good play. Wow, they actually do find a tier one. Thomas gunshots. They're going to be trying to heal up as much as they can before this final circle duel comes. Hanging out on the outside, grabbing as many heals as they can. Okay, getting the bow out and ready to fire. Oh my gosh, that was a bit of honestly just unlucky there. Coming face to face to face, a three player situation and both players chose to shoot at them. Shoot at Suhei instead of each other. Suhei did not have many options there, just tried to put as many shots down as they could. But we've already gotten to see some interesting new differences. Let's go ahead and recap that game a little bit. Suhei deciding to take the banana forkers and prioritize gathering resources instead of a um, zone placement. Suhei, once again, deciding to use the bow prim primarily 
because they feel the most confident in their movement. So being able to move so well with that bow and be confident even in situations where most players would instantly begin to run and probably get chased by the opponents, they focus in hard, focus on the movements and dodging the shots while also connecting their own bow shots and really focusing on using that bow tracking to be able to get that extra information in game. It's mostly because I'm used to it. It's always been kind of my go-to. It's also because I think it fits my movement focus playstyle a lot better than any other power-up. It makes it so I don't have to stop every time I want to heal, which leaves me much less vulnerable. I almost always focus on my own shots. And because of the way Hitrick works in Sar, I don't think it's very effective to try and dodge enemy bullets, especially for uh, players with higher ping, like myself. When I know the enemy has a significant health advantage on me, or when I get my armor knocked and the person I'm fighting has a shotgun or a sniper. Alright, Suhei has hopped out of the plane towards the end of the flight path here. And they are going to be going to a pretty popular spot. It looks like they're deciding to go to the Emu Ranch. Picking up initially the shotgun, once again, two games in a row, really, really focusing down that close range weapon. All right, they are gonna go ahead and grab a tier one armor swap gold cup, cup raid, honestly, just to get a quick heal. And then they're gonna instantly pick up the ninja booties once again to make sure that they have that superior movement. So already you're seeing an interesting concept that I know competitive players use, which is temporarily picking up a new power up for situational use. For example, we saw Ruki pick up a All right, Suhei finding the bow, already beginning to chase a player here. One bullet being taken off of his armor, but look, it doesn't matter. If you go on Suhei's screen, Suhei is going to hunt you down, just like they hunted down Ado and got the bow kill there. Hearing another player bottom right. Okay, but look, they're not gonna be 100% of the time going gung-ho. They're gonna instead relax there momentarily and feel up their armor. Now, I feel like they're already looking for a banana forker as they start to gather the bananas. So they were potentially gonna be looking for a forker for back-to-back -back games here. Now, instead of playing dual pistols or the Thomas gun like last game, it looks like Suhei is actually prioritizing a shotgun in the secondary slot this time. But once again, we've seen all of our players, or we've seen Ruki and Suhei, choose these kind of central popular locations. Suhei actually just took down another kill there off screen, kind of hanging out at the top left of zone. So we saw Ruki really want to rush into the zone at all times, but it seems like Suhei is kind of liking to lurk outside of the zone and actually kind of get picks on the players that are rotating um, back in. So Suhei actually going bow for bow for a player, but look, that is a casual bow player standing still, fully drawing the bow, but look how Suhei situationally is using this. Doing up, left, down, right, top, right, left, bottom, left, flying around the screen, and sometimes not even full charging the bow. Sometimes they're popping off a short bow shot just to help them get some extra damage and maybe finish a kill as well. So Suhei is trying to just kind of walk this popular top left area and see if they can find any players to potentially take out. But it looks like for now, they're going to be A-OK. -okay. All right, top left. So they do hear this player. And so they're once again, I think we saw this a little bit with Ruki, but so much more with Suhei. Suhei is just going to be willing to use many of their special ammo, shooting it into the popular walking areas because they know if they get even one bow shot ping, they're going to be able to chase that player with full knowledge of exactly where that player is at. And that is something that is kind of unique to Suhei's bow abilities. Remember guys, it seems like all of these competitive players are kind of finding their quirks. We saw Ruki with his sniper perfecting it in that bamboo fight. And now we see Suhei with the bow just showing us an abs absolute masterclass with this weapon. Like, 
it is just so unique for these players to be able to find a weapon that they are so good at like this to be able to try to win these events these competitive events good shots there two shots off screen and look suhei is just absolutely feeling it playing the center of circle taking every single fight that they can finally dropping the shotgun though for a thomas gun so it seems like a thomas gun is their preferred secondary weapon we might ask them about that after this game running face first into a player but look no panic here a lot of players especially in a competitive game they're gonna be panicking if a player comes face to face with them so far what we've seen from sude and rookie is they're staying cool calm and collected almost 100 percent of the time Okay, Suhei trying to get some information. Does take down the Emu. Does not want them running around on the outside by themselves. Ooh, kind of coming face to face with a player who is playing the Thomas Gun and M16, which is an absolutely dangerous combo. Will they be able to pull anything out? Absolute movement masterclass. This player has landed like two shots on them. Looking for a banana, eats another banana, and somehow that melee kills in one hit. I thought they were above the threshold there. But Suhei, look at how much movement can impact a game of Super Animal Royale. With that insane movement, he was able to survive probably 45 to 60 seconds longer than they were supposed to be able to, and takes a second place finish here with so many kills as well, all absolutely dominating that lobby. It's actually not. My preferred secondary would be the Jag because it helps cover Bo's biggest weakness, which is it being basically useless at close range. And I would say the Jag is pretty much the best gun to use if you're fighting someone close range. I usually aim for a close range plus a long range gun combo. So if I can't get a bow early, I will usually try to look for something like a sniper or a deagle with a Jag as my secondary. All right, hopping into the last game with Suhei, the last game of the video, we're going to be seeing with a south to north flight path exactly where they want to go and seeing if in this last game, if anything changes or if we're going to see some of the same gameplay tactics that we have talked about throughout this video, these tips, these tricks. All right, Suhei landing at the right side research. Honestly, kind of hunting out the blue mushrooms here for the insane speed gap. Currently have not found a bow, so they're using purple dual pistols and a magnum. Now, it looks like they instantly went for the rotation into the zone this time around. And it looks like, oh, they did find a bow, so they dropped the magnum. Go, they go ahead and take a bot down, bottom left. That player looks like they were lagging. Takes them down as well. Super right laser, kind of keeping their distance. Okay, use it. Wow, Suhei kills them with the nade there. So we've uh, honestly been watching a lot of these players prioritize grenades unless Suhei is using forkers and bananas. But the uses of the grenades have been absolutely pristine today in this video. All right, Suhei getting it in that close face-to-face -face combat and actually takes them out with the dual pistols, deciding to put away the um, bow that first time around. And actually, we actually just watched Suhei not pick up those bananas. So it seemed like this may be a ninja booty game here. So instead of bananas and Forker, they're actually prioritizing grenades and ninja booties, kind of like how we saw Rookie do as well. So I think um, Suhei is also very good at taking that same advantage i talked about earlier if you guys did not know you can see slightly lower than you can see higher slightly lower i might show you guys a screenshot on this of this right now but so a lot of the highest competitive players like to hold the top of the zone because they know that they will have that advantage if they can see just a little bit lower Suhei hitting that bow shot and means they're going to try to get this re re revenge on that player that beat them last game and they do get the revenge right there. If Suhei lands one bow shot, they're going to chase you down until you either escape luckily or until you get eliminated. Wow, Suhei choosing to pick up the sniper 
This time around, I kind of hanging out exactly like I said at the top of the zone. And now look, Suhei actually following that same sort of competitive mentality strategy that Rookie is using. Creep rolling with the ninja booties, cutting all sound away from their movement and kind of, oh my gosh, see, using the creeper, we could not even see that player bottom left when they shot that shot. Just gaining information. I think if we've learned anything from this video, information is so important, how you get it, and there's several ways to get it as well that these pros are uh, utilizing. All right, see, they're not gonna get aggressive and use all of their resources. They're just going to kind of step away from that player once they get them down to one HP. Storm is coming in. They do have the top side. There is a player with the sniper looking at Suhei here. So they're going to be once again pulling out the boat and kind of pre-firing those walkways like we've seen Suhei do all day today. And actually pulling out the sniper sees a Emu. Takes down Emu. One bow shot lands. Tries to hit the snipe to kind of remove all of the armor but does not land for now. That player's right stick is a little sticky right now and it is not working out for them. Suhei trying to heal up here on the top side before coming down to this final circle. And look, the creep rolls with the sniper once again, getting that off-screen information, waiting for a player to come to a loot pile, trying to instantly snipe off all the armor and does. Snipes that player's left armor off. And we're going to see, now it should only take two bow shots to be able to get a kill. And honestly, Our Lady of Dew landing every single SMG shot and taking down Suhei there real quickly. But once again, we got to see in this final game some of the things that the pros like to do. Sniper is so valuable in the pro slash try hard scene. Banana Forker and Ninja Booties are the things that you're gonna wanna be prioritizing. Do not forget to armor swap. Do not panic in tense situations. Focus on landing your shots and using minimal movements unless using a highly mobile weapon like dual pistols, like the silence pistol, like the bow, like we watched Suhei do. And keep pre-firing popular corners and use your sound cues, guys. All of these are some helpful tips that we picked up from these two players. Thank you to Suhei and Rookie for letting me cue snipe them and land on them to gain this new found information i hope you guys learned just one thing and got to watch kind of what the pro strategies that are being used on right now and i hope you guys will be able to implement these into some of your games as well and i appreciate you guys for watching as always and i will see you in the next super animal royale video peace out